Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Oncology Brothers Podcast. In this four-part series discussion on HCC, today's conversation with Dr. Lorenza Rimasa and Dr. Arndt Vogel, our focus was on treatment options in second line for advanced or metastatic hepatocellular carcinoma. Lorenza, can you please start us off here? How are you navigating this landscape in second line treatment option? We have a phase three data uh, after sorafenib. We have a positive phase three trials uh, showing that regorafenib improved the survival uh, versus placebo after sorafenib. Same data for cabozantinib, again, phase three in second and third line after uh, sorafenib. And for ramucirova in patients with a high baseline AFP, again, after sorafenib. So these trials show that, that a second line treatment after sorafenib was able to improve survival and other efficacy outcomes compared to placebo. If we start with lenvatinib or as we are used to do now with the uh, immunotherapy combinations like atezolizumab plus bevacizumab or the STRI regimen, durvalumab plus trimelumab, we don't have a phase three data in second line. And so in the clinic, uh, there is a, a real unmet need because we don't have a robust data based on which we can select the, the second line treatment. Arndt, would you take a minute to add on this changing landscape and how, what options we have in second line, knowing that the patients have progressed on IO or IO combination? We do have data for TKIs after sorafenib, but otherwise it's a kind of evidence-based free room. So we, we really need to, to think about how could we best sequence our treatment. Now we know from real-world data, like the Refine, and also from other prospective phase two trials, that also patients who were not able to tolerate sorafenib or who received other first-line options like lenvatinib or like uh, atezolizumab plus bevacizumab, we have a few data, but I think they can be translated and considered for all the uh, first-line uh, immunotherapy combinations. And we have data that uh, regorafenib is active, effective, and also uh, tolerable even after immunotherapy. We also have data for cabozantinib. So as, as I said at the beginning, we don't have a robust data. This is an, a, a difficult area, but based on the data that we have so far, it's safe and effective to treat patients with tyrosine kinase inhibitors after immune checkpoint inhibitors. But still, the, the question is, what should we do in clinical practice? And interestingly enough, I mean, even when we updated the ESMO guideline in 2021, we couldn't agree on a strategy. Some of our colleagues thought that we should shift the lines. Basically, sorafenib and vatinib should go to second line, and the old second line drugs should go to third line. I could never really understand that because I thought, I mean, we don't have any data for, for the Ravnib, Glenn, Martinib in second line. So why are they now the preferred second line treatment? And on the other hand, we have for carbosantinib and Ravnib data in second line. Why should they not be active after atezolizumab or Stryd? Imbrev 251, I think, will provide us data for two points. One is, can we use and what is the efficacy of Glenn, Martinib and Ravnib in second line? And in addition to that, we will learn whether we can use IO beyond progression. One thing that should also be brought up um, during these discussions is best supportive care, because sometimes that is the best option for our patients in front of us. ASCO guidelines, NCCN guidelines versus ESMO guidelines or local guidelines, any stark differences? So I think the common theme for me is that all recommend um, sequential therapy and a little bit depending on the on the guidelines, some stick to the, this um, change of first line to second line and second to third line. Um, and some are more open and recommend any drug with phase 3 evidence. We, we recommend that we need to look not only at the efficacy, but also toxicity and quality of life. And one thing that you brought up was being proactive in symptom management, be it from underlying disease or from our treatments. So I think that considering the second line, we have also to consider how patients have tolerated the first line, yes. in which clinical conditions they are. And also, we have to consider very carefully when to switch to the second line. Because in some cases, we have a, let's say, slight progression. If we have a clear disease progression with new lesions, maybe outside the liver, then, okay, we have to change. So us as community oncologists, we definitely need to get comfortable with the side effect profile and managing that. Additionally, we have to treat the disease here, especially with the symptoms that come about. So our best friends are going to be interventional radiologists, radongs, even the GI physicians. So this is a multidisciplinary approach, not just in localized setting, but even in advanced setting itself. 
Thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out our other discussions with Dr. Shroff focused on first-line treatment option in HCC. And look out for two other discussions focusing on intermediate HCC.